one different as far as your color of your skin? Didn't even realize it. It just, it, oh my goodness. Now, now that's, just a, that's just a physical example of what's already been expressed tonight. So let's go back to where, where we were in John, fourth chapter. Actually, finish up where we were in uh, uh, Second Corinthians, and then we'll go back to John. Two, you are our official. You, Paul is saying that you, Y O U, yes, you are our epistles. Read. Written in our hearts. Written in our hearts. Known and read of all men. Known and read of all men. Not some men, but all men. Go ahead. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Yahshua the Messiah, mm -hmm. ministered by us, mm -hmm. written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living Elohim. So, no, 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 wait a minute. These epistles are written not with ink? That's what it says. It's not black and white? No. The new... Testament or the New Covenant is not penned with ink. Right. It's written in your hearts. It's a spiritual covenant. Yeah. It takes a lot for us to wrap our mind around that because we want to do something for God. <laughs> like we could. Yeah. But that's what we were taught out here in, 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 in the ecclesiastical world. You've got to dig in your pocket and you've got to donate. Well, they had to offer up sacrifices and bring their animals back there. That's the old covenant. You've got to pray out loud. In many cases, you have to dress in a certain way. Everything that they do is physical. There's nothing spiritual. It's all carnal. It's all natural. You've got the lighting of candles. You've got genuflexing. You've got blessing yourself as though you could. <laughs> if I blessed myself, I'd be rich. And I'm far from that. I'm 67 years old. I'd like to retire, but I can't. I need the money. Not too smart, am I? I should have had a nice nest egg by now, at this time of my life. But I still have to work. So, the New Testament to the New Covenant is not written with pen and ink. And every one is an epistle. Every time somebody opens their mouth, you're reading them. Aren't you? Yes. You see? This tabernacle is a house. And there's a man abiding in the house, or a woman. And he's looking out the windows. You can't see him, but he's in there. And when he opens his mouth, you're reading him or her. And that's what you're finding out is what kind of individual or character or personality is in the house. I'm sure you know somebody that you'd rather not keep company with. <laughs> Unsavory characters. Maybe you or me were once that way. And people didn't want to be with us. That could be so. So, if that be the case, then you can have an intercourse that is not carnal. It's social. 
Is that somewhere near right? All right. So it's not a physical covenant. It's not written with pen and ink. So that fly leaf in your Bible is man-made. It's not from Yahweh. Okay. Keep reading it back in John. For uh, 23 and 24. John 4 and 23. Mm -hmm. But the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. For the Father seeks such to worship him. For the Father seeks us to worship him. In other words, it's about to happen. The closing out of one age and the opening up of a new age. Closing out of one dispensation and the opening up of a new way of worship. Read on. Now he is spirit. Now... Paul, the, 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 the Savior is declaring that Yahweh is spirit. Read. And they that worship him. And they that worship Yahweh. Read. Must worship him in spirit you, and in truth. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. Look. Moderator already discussed this, how that Yahweh or spirit, see, is manifesting within the cloud, symbolizing eternity. Right within this cloud, you see these attributes. Wisdom, knowledge, intelligence, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. Those are invisible attributes. Those are intangible attributes. That's what spirit is. Those Attributes, those nine principal attributes is what Yahweh is. Not what he possesses, that's what he is. Can you go to Walmart and buy an ounce of intelligence? How about a pound of love? Those things have to be demonstrated. They have to be manifested in order for you to wrap your mind around what they are. Did Arnold Schwarzenegger used to be a bodybuilder, a weightlifter? Yes. What attribute would you attach to that man while he was an athlete? Strength. Strength. And he demonstrated that. Did he not? Yes. We go back in Scripture, and it's already been brought out by the first two speakers, how that the Savior said, you search the Scriptures. And what are we searching the Scriptures for? We're searching the Scriptures to find these invisible, intangible principles which Yahweh is being manifested or demonstrated so we can comprehend something about him being spirit or invisible. And it's demonstrated over and over and over again through these events back in his story. Because it is his story. Talking about Yahweh. And it is his purpose. And within his purpose, he has had all these events take place just in a timely fashion. In a very organized manner. After the pattern of himself. And it shows his infallibility and his unerring accuracy all the way down through the ages and dispensations. And he's showing forth both mysteries. When you saw the deliverance of the children of Israel who are down here in bitter hard bondage, no way of escape, be delivered by the arm of Yahweh What does that tell you? The great power. That's an invisible, intangible attribute or principle that was demonstrated here. Yes. 
Who do you know that can open up a sea and have millions of people walk through it on dry land? <laughs> Say, well, that's just, a, that's just a Bible story. Really? I mean, go back to the drawing board and rethink that one. Who do you know that can stop the mouths of hungry lions when Daniel was thrown into the den? <laughs> Who do you know that can take a solid food substance that goes down into your digestive tract and convert it? into something that is profitable for your body that's picked up by your bloodstream and give you nourishment. And it's 70% water. And our former state dean used to say, well, you take a pail full of water and a bucket of mud and go in the garage and see what you can come up with. <laughs> he said, I, want, I don't just want it to breathe. I want it to have emotions and the ability to cry. For thou art beautifully and wonderfully made. And if you come down here on a regular basis, or you tune in on a regular basis, we will show you just how beautifully and wonderfully made you are if you're not in the medical field and you're not in college and don't have an understanding of it. You can sit right here or tune in right on this, on this program and you can get a college education. But it's not to show how smart we are or what we know, it's to show you and prove to you that that's our dedication, the existence of Yahweh, how he really is and how he actually exists. That's what this is all about. And I'll tell you what, the founder called himself the champion of the idiots. And he asked the audience, well, the assembly, when he made that statement, are you offended because I call myself the champion of the idiots? Well, I'll tell you what, after coming down here and getting a taste of this, and I mean, if you get a real, genuine taste of this, you're going to want it all. The taste isn't going to be good enough. It won't quench your thirst until you had a real taste of this. You'll come to the realization that you've never had a right thought about your creator in your entire life. And that made me realize I was an idiot. And the founder sure championed this idiot. Because I threw in the towel long ago. Because when I came down to this institute and I sat down in the class, and I told you where I came into class, the dean of that class had a fifth grade education, black man. And he's spitting out words longer than my arm and giving us the definitions of them. And I thought to myself, now this is how a carnal mind operates. <laughs> Who's he kidding? He must have gone to night school or something. How did he get all this knowledge? How could he break all this information down? And I thought, a divine vision and a revelation in this time, in this modern day and age, that, that's, that's, old, that's old Jewish stuff, you know? Yeah. That's old Hebrew stuff. That's, that's way back in the Old Testament of your Bible. A divine vision and revelation down. Now, at this particular... Well, I, I at least got a high school education. I got a few more you know, well, under my belt than he does. I started going to the library to disprove what he was saying. Guess what happened? <laughs> this fish got caught, and he's still here. So I hope that was encouraging to you. I hope it made some sense. I'll turn it back to the moderator. Thank you for the time.
Well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. We're here every Wednesday at 7.30, and we're here every Saturday at 7 o'clock. Could we all rise for the doxology? I'll be reading the doxology as it is in the last two verses of Jude in the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, be belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say in unity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.